The Taylor Rule can be viewed as a tool for assessing a central bank's position and a guide to predicting how that position is likely to evolve. In the Taylor Rule, the target nominal policy rate is equal to the real neutral policy rate plus the expected inflation rate plus 0.5 multiplied by the expected real GDP growth rate minus the trend real GDP growth rate plus 0.5 times the expected inflation rate minus the target inflation rate. The real neutral policy rate is the rate that would be targeted if growth were expected to be at trend if these two were equal and inflation is on target. So in other words, if the difference in these two brackets is equals to zero, then we will only have the first two terms. And if you take the real neutral policy rate plus the expected inflation rate, then this would be the nominal neutral policy rate. Now let's look at an example. The neutral real policy rate is 2.45% and the target inflation rate is 1.5%. So this is 1.5% and this is 2.45%. And the trend growth is estimated to be 3.2%. If growth is expected to be 1.1% and the inflation is expected to be 2.7%, calculate A, the target nominal policy rate and B, the real inflation adjusted target rate using the Taylor rule. So for A, the target nominal policy rate will be 2.45% plus the expected inflation rate which is 2.7% plus 0.5 times 1.1% minus 3.2% plus 0.5 multiplied by 2.7% minus 1.5%. So this is equals to 5.15%. This is the nominal neutral policy rate. Then for the difference in GDP, this will be negative 1.05%. And then for the difference in inflation rate multiplied by half, that will be positive 0.6%. And the sum is equals to 4.7%. Based on these numbers, what we can tell is that the expected real GDP growth rate is lower than the trend real GDP growth rate. So if you want to increase the GDP growth rate, then you will have to lower the policy rate. So that's why this is a negative difference. But for the last term, the difference in the inflation rates is a positive. In other words, we expect inflation rate to be 2.7%, but if the central bank wants to meet their target, which is to reduce inflation rate, then the action should be to increase the nominal policy rate to curb inflation. And hence, we see a positive difference here. So the net impact results in a target nominal policy rate of 4.7%. In other words, the target nominal policy rate is below the nominal neutral policy rate. But of course, we need to know what is the nominal policy rate currently in order to draw more conclusion. Now for B, if you're looking for the real inflation adjusted target rate, you will just need to take the target nominal policy rate minus the expected inflation rate, which is 2.7%. So that will be equals to 2%. So this is what it means by real. That means we remove inflation from the nominal rate.